This is a really important step that most people skip when they're building a truck on weave springs. It's nothing crazy or new, it's just cycling your suspension. Which just means to move your suspension throughout its entire range of motion. This is an important step because it lets you check for tire clearance and make sure you're not going to have any rubbing issues. You can find your shock mount locations and your shock lengths. Find where your limit straps need to be, binding and drivetrain. You can find any binding and suspension. There's a lot of good things that come out of cycling your suspension. But a lot of people skip this step and end up running into issues down the line. I, I skipped my 79 Bronco that I drove through high school and I had a set of four inch lift Deaver springs on it, getting the same shocks everybody else was running. Packaging was all wrong. I never cycled it, but I definitely found out when I jumped it and my rear shocks were blown out. A cross member was just bent and mangled. Cycling and doing a little bit of work on the front end of a build is gonna save you a lot of ass pain later on. Time for me to shut up and show you how to do it. It's really simple. First step is going to be getting the vehicle's weight supported on jack stands. I highly recommend the Harbor Freight gray jack stands. For that you can start pulling the weave springs. Now that we have these big boys out, we can start tearing them apart. Broke my back. Spinal. First thing you're going to want to do is measure the overall thickness of this leaf pack. This one is two and three quarter inches. You need to remember that because it's gonna be important here in a minute. Take off these little spring retainer brackets. Then it's time to actually start disassembling the leaf pack itself. Even though these leaves are off the truck, there's still a lot of tension built up in this leaf pack and it's all held together by this centering pin or center bolt. We need to place clamps on either side of that to hold the pack together while we remove that centering pin. The centering pin has a rounded head, so you're gonna need some vice grips to hold one end of it while you take the nut off the other side. Now all the tension is held in these C-clamps, so we're gonna alternate backing each one off and this whole leaf pack will disassemble itself. So go ahead and tear that leaf pack apart until you find this. This is your main leaf spring. You can tell it apart because it goes from eyelet to eyelet all in one piece. Now that you have your main leaf separated from the pack, it's time to build our spacer. The whole reason for it is to mimic the overall thickness of your leaf spring. Obviously there's only one spring in the pack right now, so we need to create a spacer so that everything else is the same in mounting orientation to mimic the size of your leaf pack. Now if you're looking at a spring underbuild, it doesn't really matter how thick that spacer is because that main leaf is bolted directly to the axle housing. That means it doesn't influence your ride height in any way. Whereas a spring over setup, the thickness of your pack does influence your ride height. Every single leaf under that main leaf acts like a lift block, essentially raising your ride height. This one was two and three quarter inches thick and the main leaf is 0.25 inches thick. So that means we would need a two and a half inch spacer to go in between that main leaf and the axle housing to replicate exactly what that leaf pack is gonna do and not alter anything when we're cycling the suspension. Now don't over-engineer this spacer. It can be made out of wood, anything that you have on hand, it's easy to work with. I happen to find this piece of wood that's exactly two and a half inches wide, which is perfect. If I was doing a spring over, I could add shims to the top of that just to get the thickness dialed in where it needs to be. But since I'm doing spring under, it's perfect. Once your block's done, go ahead and reassemble. This is what your spacer should look like when you're done. Remember that this thickness needs to match your spring's thickness. If you were doing a spring over setup, spring under, not a big deal as long as it clamps it tight to the axle housing. With the blocks fully installed, you are ready to cycle your suspension. So for me, this is a bare frame, so it doesn't even have enough weight to compress it fully. But on a complete rig, what you would do is essentially put the frame on jack stands to support the weight of the vehicle, and then just jack from the axle up, and it'll compress your suspension without providing enough force to actually take it off the jacks or anything. If there's any questions, let me know in the comments, but hopefully that's enough information to at least get you started mounting your bump stops or whatever you have going on. Thanks for following along. Keep an eye out for more videos.